Okay, that was a big giant pile of zero fun. Hey, Bee Butts, I'm back, and today, pfft, something landed on my nose. It was my own hair. And today, I want to let you know that I am a self-proclaimed artist. Oh, I didn't realize you couldn't see all three paintings. Well, there are three here, and uh, I wanted you to know that I'm an artist. One of those creative type of people who like to stick things together, or paint things, or even just creating something to give away as a gift. And because I like to do that very often, I go through a lot of glue. More specifically for today's video, hot glue. Many of the crafts that I do require patience and a fine precision tip. But since watching Jen squirt glue out of glue guns was probably not on your list of exciting things to do today. I've decided to add art. But not these, because they took like three hours of very, very committed paint night instruction. And while I'm super proud of them, I can never recreate it on my own. Side note, if you've never tried a paint night, I strongly urge you to do so, because they're super fun and it allows you to learn something that you might not have otherwise thought you could do. Like me. This one was my first ever paint night creation, and it's just a forest of cherry blossoms. To be honest, I didn't really like the way the cherry blossoms looked on everybody else's, so I kind of made my own thing up, and now it's more like a truffula cherry blossom tree forest. This is my second painting. It's just a beautiful night sky over a lake or river with some shadowy trees in the foreground. I call it night sky over a lake or river with shadowy trees in the foreground. I know I'm good at titles, right? And lastly, we have a waterfall with rocks at the bottom and some sparse trees with little blossoms on them. And this concludes Jen's paint night adventures so far, until three days from now when I do it again. So make sure you check out my Instagram if you want to see what that painting looks like. But in the meantime, we glue. Except that that's too many to check out at once. So we begin with one. This is the AdTech Precision Pro, and it costs about $20 to $22 in Canada, depending on where you buy it. If you're in the States, it's cheapest to buy it from Walmart at just over $10, and the most expensive place I've found it is Joann's for just under $20. Now I'm gonna get all infomercially on you. <laughs> This glue gun comes with a needle nozzle to apply glue with accuracy and precision, which is one of the reasons that I use it so often and prefer it to the others. It's got a pretty ergonomic handle and trigger, so it doesn't hurt as much when you're using it long term. And it also has a pretty fast 20 watt heater. And that's only relevant information if you care how long it takes for your glue to heat up. And lastly, it has rubber grips on the bottom so you can place your glue gun down and it will hold itself up. And the only problem I actually have with this glue gun, just like any other, is that it tends to leak hot glue when it's resting and not in use. So the way I avoid this is by gently pulling the glue stick out of it so it doesn't continuously feed through and uh, it seems to work so far. And I almost forgot to mention, it uses your average mini size glue stick or a multi temperature glue stick. And that's the end of the AdTech Pro. Next up is the standard go-to glue gun that I get whenever I can't find this one. I grabbed this at the dollar store and it was about $3.50. I don't know how much it's gonna cost elsewhere because depending on what kind of dollar stores you have, they're not all gonna be the same brand. This one here is a low temperature glue gun, which means it gets between 10 to 15 watts of heat and it's got a protected nozzle. This is probably your best bet for easy crafting, especially if you're gonna be doing it with children, with adult supervision, of course, because there's always still gonna be a risk of getting burnt. Jen's wrist is proof of that. Thank you very much, ugly sweater video. There's nothing specifically special about this gun. It doesn't boast a fine tip, nor does it advertise an ergonomic handle. It's basically just your standard mini craft glue gun, which also uses a standard glue stick. But since this one's a low heat, I wouldn't recommend the high temperature glue sticks because that just doesn't make sense, does it? And our last glue gun of the day is something that's actually quite exciting to me because I grabbed it off of Amazon based on it randomly popping up and I was like, click, done. This one here is a Westcott hot glue pen, which I have never even heard of before. Apparently that's a thing. For me, this cost $21 Canadian on our Amazon, and the best price I was able to find in the States was $11 at Walmart. Now this is an all temperature glue pen. It's got a non-stick tip and also apparently a color changing nozzle, which will go from blue to red to let us know when this bad boy is hot to trot. And I'm seeing multiple buttons or triggers here, but according to the package, this trigger on top is a uh, very good for controlled dispensing so I'll be testing that and because this one here is an 
an all temperature glue device. It is compatible with the mini glue sticks and should be compatible with the high temperature glue sticks. Okay, so what are we doing today, Jen? Well, I'm glad you didn't ask because we're gonna combine those paintings with hot glue because I figure it's the best way to test out some thick dispensing as well as precision fine point dispensing. I don't really expect this one to do very much fine precision, so I'm really not comparing this one in that category, but since this type of glue gun is the one people are most likely to have, and at the end of the day, this is also about the craft, we gotta see how well it will work out. But between these two here, my goal is to find out which one is the most comfortable for long-term use, and of course, which one offers better precision. So now we're gonna switch down to the table, open up our glue guns, and get started on our art, and hopefully discover which glue gun is the best for Jen's needs and possibly yours. Hooray! We get to make learning fun. Here we are at the table, of course, that's obvious, and here's all the materials I'm gonna be using today. Don't be afraid, I know it looks like a lot, but realistically, depending on what you choose to paint, you might not need all of this. It's nothing more than a paint palette, various acrylic paints, glue sticks, an assortment of paint brushes, a piece of foam so that my hot glue can melt onto something when it's sitting randomly, paper towel for blotting, a cup of water, which is off screen that you can't see, some cardboard on the table so I don't ruin anything when I'm painting, some blank canvases, and then of course our various glue guns. And the only reason I have scissors is to open the packaging. I'm pretty excited right now. I really hope this works out because I've never done it before. If it's terrible, you'll still get the video, but instead of being a tutorial on how to make something awesome, it might become a tutorial on what to not do if you want to make something awesome. Okay, so here are all the colors I've chosen to use for this specific painting. We've got black, silver, or gray if you have it, white, pink, more white, bright red, a nice bright blue, more white, and a small amount of black. And you'll notice I've left many small sections and big areas empty, that way I can mix more colors as needed. Here is my new glue pen. It is white and blue. The underside is a grippy rubbery material, and so is this back piece that goes around the cord. All remaining blue pieces are plastic. It feels pretty heavy to one side. I am right-handed, so let's try it on the left. Feels wonky because I'm right-handed. Wow still a little heavy. On top, we've got our trigger for dispensing. Not gonna lie, my hand naturally rests forward, so I feel like the trigger should have been up there. There's probably a reason it's back here, but it doesn't seem like it's gonna be the most ergonomically comfortable thing to push my finger backwards. It doesn't seem like it's gonna be an easier dispensing method. Not exactly sure what these things here are, cause Whatever it is, I just did it, so hopefully it's not gonna mess me up too much. Good news, folks. Turns out I did nothing. To begin using this for the very first time, you push one glue stick all the way into the pen, which they've already done for me, and then you'll insert a second, which I can't do at the moment. And then after that, you are supposed to pull this all the way back, so I guess I did it right without knowing. Ow, it pinched me. Already, that seems like one thing that may become a problem. I will set this to the side and quickly open up the dollar store glue gun so that all three are ready to go. All right, here is my craft gun. It is very lightweight. It's got a white trigger in the front, but it takes a good amount of push to use it. It's got two plastic legs at the front of the gun, just underneath the nozzle. That way, when we aren't using it, we can leave it resting. However, you may be like me and end up just resting it like this a lot, which is how you end up getting a really dirty glue gun. <laughs> I've got all three of my glue devices plugged in. And right off the bat, I'll say the Precision Pro is excellent because it's rubber grips on the bottom. And because it does stand at less of an angle, it's gonna end up losing less glue than the craft gun, but at least they both stand, whereas the glue pen definitely does not. Now I'm gonna quickly test out each of these glue guns in straight lines, and we'll see how close we can get to a fine tip. First up is the low temperature dollar store craft gun. All right, I just realized you can't really see this. It's a nice thick line of glue, and as long as I use the plastic legs as a guide to hold it steady, I can actually get it to follow along the line that I made. Whereas, unless you have a very steady hand, you would get squiggles. Next up, we have my Precision Pro. And to be honest, it offers pretty much the exact same thickness as the dollar store craft glue gun. I never actually compared them side by side before, so now I just look like a crazy lunatic who loves a fine tip glue gun. Oh, no it is thinner, okay. And lastly, our pen. Right off the bat, I'll tell you that the whole front section is hot, and although it has this rubber grip, your finger is actually resting directly on that hot surface. But if I pull my hand back a bit into a weird, less ergonomic, comfortable position, so I don't get burnt in the front, is now setting me up for absolute failure 
there when this trigger pinches me. Here we go. Ow! It still pinched me! Oh! I thought I got it all the way down. That was not fun. Okay. Oh, it's still going. Oh god, okay. It does give a very nice fine stream of glue, but the more you push it, the more the triggers pinch your skin on the other side. And the worst part is, nothing else is coming out now until I set up that trigger again. That's gonna get annoying in a hurry. Oh my gosh. Why are they trying to hurt me? I'm gonna try this really weird bird position and see if that helps me to avoid getting pinched. As long as there's still trigger room left, the glue will continue spouting, so just be ready to use it. I will admit it offers a nice, fine stream of glue. I'll also admit that it's not the best feeling on my wrist or fingers, especially in the front, because this hand is all red and getting burnt. It's a pricey way to get your craft done and also inflict pain on oneself. Now that we know the capabilities of our various glue devices, we can get ready to paint. And I'm gonna get started by wetting the entire board with just a big fat paintbrush. Now I'm just going to paint everything white with a tiniest hint of grey, or in my case, silver. And now with a wet brush, I'm going to draw a large weird V shape down the center with black. With a smaller wet brush, I'm going to take a good bit of white and add it to the black that I have left mixed on the side to make a really, really light, light grey. And I'm going to draw a line right across the top where my weird cone shape stops. Now I'm going to take that same light color and brush and make some very fine trees. This has dried a little bit, so now we're going to take our fine tip glue guns and accentuate some of these very thin branches. But don't go overboard here on details because these are going to be further back, so they won't be as noticeable. Now I'm going to start with my old faithful. I'm going to quickly do the exact same thing on the left side of the painting using the glue pen. But I'm going to note that it is super hot, like burning my fingers hot. Once again, we have to set up the trigger apparently. This is so nerve wracking, I don't want to get hurt. Okay, now we got to cock it back again. This pen seems like quite the hassle to use, guys. It's hot on my fingers, it keeps pinching me. Ow! I have to keep refilling it and it constantly streams out but because I'm holding it in a pencil like position it does seem very familiar and slightly easier to control than a gun Okay, that was a big giant pile of zero fun. Now that the glue is dry, I'm gonna roughly go over it with the light gray paint. While this light layer of paint dries, we'll start to mix the next color. I'm gonna grab a bit more white and then some more black to make a darker gray. And then on the lower portion of the line we've created, we'll make two or three thicker trees on each side of the black. And don't panic, but they are gonna overlap the ones that we've just made. And because we've added glue to the first layer and now it's more 3D, you gotta make sure that your paint is getting on both sides of those glue streams that we've made. Add a dot more black to make it just slightly darker and go in for my second tree. And now my last tree on the first side again. This one's gonna be tall and spindly. Once again, I'm going to let this paint dry for a minute before going in with my hot glue again, except this time I'm going to use the craft gun and the pro tip. I'm going to also add some glue along the sides of this weird black shape that I've got going on here. And now I'm going to go in with my regular old craft gun. Okay, I will admit that this is not as great for getting the branches and details as it is for filling the tree trunks. So if you chose to use this technique to try to make a painting and you do want fine shapes and lines, I wouldn't recommend the cheaper craft guns. Using a flat dry brush, we're going to mix together the leftover grey we have with a bit more white to make a lighter grey. And then in wide quick strokes, we're going to brush over the weird black shape that I've got going down the center, making sure not to fill it up completely. We do want some to show through. And you may have figured 
figured out by now that I'm trying to recreate the first paint night painting I made. Or maybe you didn't and I spoiled the surprise. Sorry. And I'm going to use a fine tip brush to add white to some of that gray to make it lighter and add some horizontal lines but not completely across and not a specific distance apart from one another. They're kind of just there. While this dries, I'm going to switch back to my trees. The next step we're going to do is accentuate just a few of these lines that we've added. Now I'm going to take some black to outline the path, but I'm not going to repaint the ones in the center. Now that they're dry, they can just stay as is. Once this paint dries, I'm going to add two more trees to either side of the path, this time using straight up black. And remember, these trunks are very close to us in our fake proximity, so they would be very large. I'm just gonna take another dry brush and some light gray and dark gray and just sort of dot around the trees and fill in all the white spots along the sides of the path. And then again at the top of the path so that it starts to blend in with the distance instead of looking so sharp. And now I'm sure this is not looking all that fantastic and from my view I just see a lot of glaring black and gray so I'm hoping that when it all comes together it looks a lot greater than it does right now because well this would have been a waste of time otherwise. So in the meantime I'm going to start mixing some colors over here. I'm going to be using white, pink, and red but I will be adding dots of blue to sort of change the color to a purple as needed. Now what I learned at paint night was that you kind of just want to do like that, like bloppy circles, but I like to do the smashy smashy because it just looks prettier and I feel like it fills out the trees more and you can see how bright that pink is going to be so I'll be adding whites and a little bit of blue to change the look of it. Oh I forgot to use a little bit of hot glue to outline the trunks of our newest black trees. And now paint them black. All right, now we are ready to paint. Pretty excited here, pretty excited guys. Basically, you're just gonna start adding some flowers to your trees. You don't wanna completely fill everything up because you wanna be able to see some of these branches peeking through, but you do want it to be nice and full. So that's what I'm gonna do. As you go, mix in other colors to switch it up a bit. Trees like to change depending on which way you look at them, the sunlight, or if they are a mixed concoction of trees. I don't know. I just like the look of many colors. When my brush starts to get dry, like before I fill it back up, I like to add white by itself. And then those petals would look like the sun is just sort of coming through them, making them lighter. Ah, cherry blossoms. I feel like this is not going to look as pretty as I want it to, but I'm okay with that. Because really we were testing a gun, a glue gun. All right, it's not the greatest I've ever done. Clearly we can see that. But the point is, it's 3D. Okay guys, I am done my painting and before I show it to you completely, I mean, I know you can kind of see it over there, I just want to let you know that after I was able to see it face forward instead of top down and under shiny lights, I realized there were gaps that I was missing and things that were not nicely outlined in black. So I did a few quick touch-ups and now it's enough that I could be semi-proud of it. I mean, it was a first time try. You win some, you lose some. So this was the original and this is my glue gun recreation, so a 3D version. There's some very obvious differences, such as size, color, and stuff like that. But realistically, I think it turned out pretty good. And it's probably not showing off very well, but it is in fact 3D, in the sense that anything that had hot glue is now sticking out from the picture, which is pretty cool. Now, could it look a lot better? Yes. Yes, it could. Would it still be nice enough to hang up? I'd say yeah, as long as you don't go close up. Because, I mean, I'm looking at the screen right now, and it doesn't look that bad. But the closer you get, 
you can see all the love and imperfections that went into it. But at the end of the day, I still have a completed art piece, which I'm gonna put down. And the answer to my glue device question, is there really a difference in glue guns? The answer is yes. We'll start with this one. As pretty much the cheapest option you can get, whether it's through a regular store or a dollar store, this does the exact job that you would need for regular everyday glue gun use. Maybe not necessarily fine details on a painting that nobody ever thought you would use it for, but everything else should work just fine. The only problems I have with these are that the triggers are a bit tight and the angle that it rests allows for a lot of glue to get wasted. And so that right there is your under $5 glue gun. Just don't use it for hard to reach things. Basically, if you were to build, for example, a dollhouse, make sure you have all the things you want on the walls and such before gluing them together. Because if you had already created the shape and glued that room together and then needed to put something in, you might screw up. And now the showdown of the fine tip precision glue devices. In the left hand, at about $20 or whatever I said at the beginning of the video, we have our needle nose fine tip precision hot glue gun. This burns at a high heat. It's got a good handle that I can hold onto for quite a while before it starts to cramp and doesn't take too much effort to squeeze the trigger. It's also got its own rubberized base so that it can stand upright unassisted and for the most part doesn't lose as much glue as the regular glue guns because it's not tipping downward. It offers a really nice thin stream of glue and can get into tight spots. You can't see it, but I was giving a thumbs up which leaves me with the right hand. I was actually pretty excited to test this out when I saw it pop up on Amazon, but realistically, I don't think I would ever recommend this. It's not super easy to hold, and you also don't have access to the button in this position, which means you actually have to move your hand back, which now leaves you wide open and clear to get pinched continuously by this pullback mechanism, which in itself is just annoying as heck because every few seconds you gotta cock it back so that you can start expelling hot glue again. The only thing that's actually neat about it is the fact that the nozzle changes color, but you can get that on other glue guns anyways. Another issue I had is that there's no way to let it rest without it just sitting on its side. And when you do that, you end up picking it back up and it's even hotter right here because this is where the heating element is. And another issue is that I had to keep pushing down the glue stick in the back in order for this mechanism to actually work properly anyways. It doesn't continuously feed through like an average glue gun would. Long story short, don't don't buy the pen. It, it sucks. In fact, after I did the first set of trees, I didn't even touch it again because it burnt my hand. At the end of the day, I want a Swiss Army knife for a glue gun. Multiple functions. But at least now we know we can technically make glue art. I mean, what do you give it? A thumbs up, a thumbs down, or somewhere in the middle? I don't know. I'm on the fence right now. If you know somebody who would enjoy watching this video because they like crafting, painting, uh, weird reviews of glue gun versus glue pens, or just my videos in general, then please share this one with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like about the video, or any suggestions you might have to either A, make this work without hurting myself if you've tried it, or B, if you have any other cool craft ideas using glue guns that aren't necessarily glue gun crafts. Like not just straight up gluing things together. Does that make sense? Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.